Well, appreciate everyone signing on today. Um, looks like we have a majority of the people. Um, I am recording this as well. So for those that are arriving a little bit later, they will have this. Um, uh, had a had, had a great response to this webinar. A lot of great uh, large counties and cities uh, that sound like it's in, you're interested in that idea of improving communication with your residents before they're ready to apply for uh, a permit. And uh, I just came back from a uh, um, building officials association meeting, emerging technology down in Florida. And I uh, got to talk with a large, a lot of large counties and cities down there, and they all have the same problem. Uh, and that is they have a lot of information, um, but want to find ways to sharing it. So look forward to uh, uh, sharing this information with all of you. And so the idea today is how do you manage your information gatherers, right? Uh, uh, I'm sure all of you have very robust permit systems, spend a lot of time on them, but when someone calls in and is just looking for information, what do you do, right? And invariably, usually it's a manual process, it's pulling out PDF files, it's determining the zoning, it's scribbling some additional steps on the side of the page, um, but in in looking at these residents, these are information gatherers don't have a construction background, right? They, uh, and they're just looking for some information. It could be as simple as setback information, fees, et cetera, um, or it could be something more. Um, with uh, what I'm finding out with cities and counties is today they are, you know, disseminating this information by just putting it all up on their websites. And they're trying their best to, you know, simplify, you know, laying out zoning maps, various documents, you know, what does or doesn't require a permit page, uh, different permit applications, building codes. But if you're an average resident and you just go on your website, they don't know what to do and they're confused. And so they invariably call you guys. Um, uh, I even had and talked with one big city uh, down in Florida that had a, they they said they had a guide and you know in, in looking at their guide they uh, it was a static document and it had the words if applicable or uh, you know this may apply or if you're in a flood zone do this or add these steps and invariably for the resident this is confusing right they and so they. They get frustrated and they call you guys and try to make sense of this as well. So in the end of the day, the customer is just suffering from information overload, right? They, you, you're certainly giving them a lot of information, but does it all apply to me or does none of it apply? And so making sense of that is uh, a challenge. Uh, you know, whether it's a lack of consistency in enforcement uh, you know, where because there are so many people calling into uh, the city or county and there's so many permit techs, invariably they start gaming the system, right? Uh, uh, calling multiple times. They know if they call enough times, they will get a better answer than they got before, maybe less expensive, maybe less steps. Uh, but also, you know, for a system that just doesn't have a single source of the truth. You know, the idea behind being that uh, uh, if the planning department were to pick up the phone, maybe they wouldn't give all the information. If 311 were to take the call, which a lot of large cities utilize, maybe they wouldn't have all the information, but be able to give them a single source of the truth. The other challenge being that customers can't retain everything they hear, right? And and a lot of times, because it is a, a manual process, there's a lot of things scribbled around the edges, and residents leave kind of like, oh boy, you know, do I do I know all this now at this point? Because um, every process is different, and uh, and then the other piece, which 
I heard I certainly heard down in Florida yesterday was it's hard to keep up with the changing requirements, right? There's a building code change. It affects certain permit types. Uh, it goes into effect tomorrow. Does everyone remember? There's a fee schedule change. Uh, well, having a system now that can keep up with those challenges. And also training new staff is difficult, especially I'm hearing, you know, cities and counties are, are uh, there's a lot of turnover. And so you may have some people that know the process very well and others that are learning it. And so that is difficult as well. But the big thing is, there's a lot of other work that needs to be done, certainly when it comes to the permit process. And so, boy, if this could be simplified, this information gathering part, this would be helpful. But the big thing is these people keep coming. Uh, this is an actual picture of a, uh, a permit department down in Georgia, uh, people waiting patiently. Uh, but and, and they also keep calling um, with these questions you know, before they're ready to apply for a permit. So some keys to uh, improve this uh, level of customer service. The first thing, especially for a larger city or county, is to identify challenges early, right? Uh, things like, hey, your property is in a flood zone, so you're going to have to do these additional steps. Better to find out early in the process uh, you know, even before they're applying for a permit, then later when the inspection the inspectors come out and stop everything going on out there. Um, your property isn't zoned for that. Uh, with with um, Camino and our guide, we can, you know, just stop them early on. Hey, you're trying to put a multifamily house on a property that's zoned for single family homes. So, and Tell them where to go. What do they need to do next? But they certainly don't have to go through the whole process. They can know that early on. Or a big one, especially with uh, counties that have incorporated jurisdictions within them, is you're not even in our county or city. You know, you're you're outside. And so why have them waste time with you? And and also why have you? you know, waste time take looking at this application and going, it's not even in our jurisdiction. Um, also providing clear directions, you know, tailored to their specific project and, uh, and zoning, not, you know, this may apply, this may apply, just share what does apply with them. Um, be consistent, obviously having that single source of the truth uh, and offering services at all hours. One of the things I hear from uh, larger counties and cities is they say, well, we like that we sit down with our residents and share, you know, and share this information and have our sit down. And, you know, we like that face-to-face -face contact. And and that's great. And and certainly we don't want you to, to lose that. But what we're finding in today's day and age is there is a segment of your population that doesn't want to sit down with you. They just want the answer and they don't want to wait. They want to get it at eight o'clock at night. And, you know, there it is. They could get it easily. And that's what we can uh, offer. So with Camino now, bringing in all the various pieces that you have, regulations, the handouts that you have that are on your website, your GIS that has a lot of valuable information, but also your staff knowledge, right? There's a lot of knowledge up in people's heads. Let's get it into our system. So if that person were to leave, th that information doesn't leave with them. So, how we do it and how Camino does it and how it's different from one of those static quote unquote guides that people have is we bring in your GIS information into our system. So we know where your flood zones are. We know where your historic districts are. We know the zoning of every parcel. Um, and from that, we can change our guides based on that. And also, 
you know, based on the zoning that they're in, but also based on the type of project, we we can ask the applicant specific questions about their project. And maybe based on the zoning, maybe ask a few additional questions. These are the same questions that your permit techs are asking the applicants uh, before, you know, when they're gathering information. And at the end of the day, taking that information and providing them just the information that they need, All right? So the big thing is, uh, uh, and, you know, and we have even a lot of people on this call that have, you know, some some very robust permit systems. But what Camino is replacing is that manual process that sits outside the permit process, right? You know, gathering information. So the guide sits outside and even part of our guide can be a link to for them at the end, if and when they're ready to apply for the permit and go through uh, that process. Um, we also have an application portal, which would use the intelligence from the guide and, and allow for a simplistic application. We won't be talking about that uh, today. Um, and we also even have a complete permit system. Uh, but again, not talking about that today, talking about the guide as a standalone uh, uh, piece. The next piece is uh, the next piece is to, to broaden your horizons here in this example is as much as we're going to be talking about, you know, a building permit kind of guide here, um, this guide can be used in a lot of other departments for, for no extra money, right? So you could share it with planning and zoning. They have complicated process. Business licensing has complicated processes that can be simplified, a lot of different areas, uh, and they can utilize it as well and sh share the cost within the city or county. We have over 100 uh, customers using us all over the uh, uh, U.S. and Canada, and um, the benefit for you is as a hosted solution, we're we're getting a lot of great ideas from these organizations and we don't use them all, but those that we do use to improve the guide, you get automatically, right? So it's, it's we'd certainly notify you of the enhancements that are rolling out month, monthly, if not certainly quarterly, and you get those. So as a hosted solution, uh, you get the benefit of continued enhancements from from all these various entities out there. Last thing, which is a real uh, powerful part of our guide is it has no coding. So a lot of the people on this call, their permit systems require, you know, a technical a, a computer savvy person that understands coding, that can make a change to the permit system. On our guide, we can train someone, a permit tech in the permit department on the logic of Camino. And if there is a building code or a fee code, fee structure change, they can very easily go into Camino and tweak the guide to stay in line with those new, uh, those new codes that are out there. So no coding required. We have some cities, the uh, city of Santa Clarita, literally built their guide themselves uh, because, again, it is so easy to use and build. So we had, in, during the pandemic, we had some people that had entirely new permits, you know, uh, some sidewalk permit, you know, for eating on the sidewalk. They generated a guide for it in a matter of minutes, and it was there to share the information with their residents if they, if they needed it. So let's jump into the demo. And certainly guys, if there are any questions, uh, put them up in the chat. I'm certainly open for that at the, at, at the end of the demo. First off, as a hosted solution, wanted to share with you, uh, this is Charles County, Maryland. Uh, they are a guide customer. They have been for a long time and they also use InterGov as their permit system, right? but they didn't have anything to answer residents' questions before 
uh, they apply for a permit. So they they set it up on in their system as to to generate a guide is step one, and step two is apply for the permit. Um, and really, your IT staff would love Camino because that's about all they have to do is build a button on your website to take the individual to uh, Camino. So in this example, if they were to push on that button, they would come to a landing page, something like this. Um, now, this is a demo site, so you can see it has everything under the sun from opening up a business, planning processes, residential and commercial. Um, important to note is with Camino, this can be configured however you want. If you if you want to change the wording on residential building project, if you want to change this little you know picture here, you can. So we have some entities that their guide is just a residential building project because that's their biggest challenge. They don't have any of these other items. Um, in this example, we will go into residential projects. Um, Camino now starts drilling down on what type of project is it? And again, on this page, this can be configured however you want. Um, we also have this Google-like search bar up here at the top so that if someone says, well, I'm just looking to put in a pool, they can type in pool and Camino can say, well, is it a pool house or a pool or in a hot tub? And they can quickly get to where they want to go. But in this example, uh, we are going to say it's a new accessory structure and you know, in this example, drilling down on accessory structures here, we're going to say it's a detached accessory dwelling unit or ADU. Um, you see here now, Camino comes right in and says, well, what is your um, address? Uh, let me type in a quick address here. So you can see here, um, gives you down a drop down option of addresses. And this would also allow the individual, if they were outside the city or county limits, we would also have those addresses. So again, to be able to identify and let them know you're not even in the county. But in this example, it's uh, we're Pine Street here, 2024. We select our address. Camino puts a bullseye on the uh, property. And we, we also, as you see over here, know their uh, parcel number, they can also select their parcel by their parcel number if they don't have an address yet, as an example. Uh, but in this example, we'll say, yep, this is my house. So let's continue. At this point now, Camino knows a lot of information, right? We know the zoning of this parcel. We know whether they're in a flood zone or a historic zone, whatever. Uh, we also know they're, they're wanting information on an ADU. So we have these questions, you know, and again, they're simple questions. We want an individual with no background at eight o'clock at night to be able to get through this. Um, so in this example, do you have any trees on or near the site that might be impacted? This is a big one. Um, in California, this is one that, that people forgot to ask created a process where when the inspector came out, he had to stop construction because the individual didn't get a tree permit, but no one ever told him about a tree permit. And so Camino's not gonna forget to ask, um, so to be able to inform them about a tree permit if they do have trees on or near the site. Will the ADU be larger than 200 square feet? In this example, we'll say yes. Um, maybe that's the delineator between whether it needs a permit or not, right? So if they say no, it might my, my this ADU is smaller than 200. Maybe the response to the guide is you don't need a permit, you know. In that example, will your ADU have kitchen or gas appliances? Now here's here's an example where, and you can include this everywhere. We have a I'm not sure how to answer it button, right? So eight o'clock at night, I don't know how to answer that. Well, let's give them some additional information on what you're asking. Maybe this could include a hyperlink or an attachment. 
And so they can come back and say, okay, yeah, I know how to answer it now. And they can move on. Now, here's an interesting one. It says, do you have flood insurance? Um, Camino can also add questions based on the zoning of the property. In this example, the, this property is in a flood zone. So we add a question saying, do you have flood insurance? In, important to note, if this person wasn't in a flood zone, this qu question wouldn't even be there, right? So in this example, we say, yeah, I am in a flood, you know, I do have flood insurance and we submit our answers. Now, Camino is looking to generate fees, uh, you know, and give them an idea on the fees that they should expect, which is one of the questions they ask. Uh, in this example, it's just based on the number of structures and the project valuation. Um, just know that if you have a complex fee structure or simple fee structure, we can generate the questions and do the calculations to generate those. So in, in this now, we submit our answers and we have our guide. Um, hopefully you guys were all timing me and this, uh, this takes about 90 seconds for an individual with no construction background to be able to get all their answers customized to them and their specific zoning situation, right? So in looking at this, and again, it's important to note that this guide is completely configurable by you. We have, we have some cities and counties that have very simple guides. You know, they just pass very basic information um, and others go into great depth. You know, um, Santa Clarita, um, generates how to hire a designer and questions to ask a designer when you're hiring them. Others have links to, you know, uh, designers in, in the county that have been approved by the county or, what, or whatever, or maybe a, a web page that has that. So again, you can build this however you want. Um, so in this example, we're saying, okay, you're in an R1 zone. But what does that mean to be in an R1 zone? And you can give them some kind of layman's terms on what being in an R1 zone means. But we can also share, because we know they're in an R1 zone, what the setbacks of an R1 zone are, as an example. And it, and it includes hyperlinks to those pertinent pages for setbacks. But also, we give your resident the ability to reach out to you and say, you know, I have a question, you know, on setbacks. And they go into their question and uh, they post it to you. But Camino knows what department to send this to. In this example, we would be sending it to planning and zoning. And the individuals, a group or an individual in planning and zoning would get an email with this question and they can reply to that email right from their, uh, right from their email, you know, their phone or their laptop and start a conversation with the resident um, uh, or simply answer the question. But the benefit is Camino is saving this the question and the in the conversation within with the guide. So removing that the he said she said situation, you know, great example. You know, a, the inspector goes out and the person's started the pool right on the property line, and he said, "Well, I talked to planning and zoning, and they said I could do this." Well, you could look back and see that conversation, and and see that you did not say that. Um, we're also in this example, letting them know, hey, your project is zoned for an ADU. So you're good, right? And so again, very focused on their on their project, uh, on their on their work. Um, but now we get into that flood zone information. Important to note here, the reason we're sharing this, you know, floodplain requirements and all this information is because they are in a flood zone. We're not if they were not in a flood zone, they wouldn't see this as part of their guide. So truly customized to them. So, you know, hey, here's a 
Here's an attachment that they can download on what a floodplain is. Uh, you know, various floodplain development ordinances, but also letting them know if and when they ever do apply, they're going to need an elevation certificate. And we can give them a link to an, uh, you know, elevation certificate information that will be required as an example. Um, here we have uh, frequently asked questions for ADUs. Now this, this document might be on your website along with another 30 to 50 attachments. The important thing with Camino is we're just sharing the documents that, that apply to them, not hitting them with the fire hose of all the information that's out there. So now, as we go into the, you know, talking about the application itself, we're letting these people know, hey, if and when you do go into this, your permit system, uh, uh, you are going to need a building permit, a tree removal permit, and a floodplain development permit, right? Because, because of the, you know, they said they had a tree on or near their site, and they are in that a uh, floodplain. So again, just laying out what they will expect. So again, when they do get to your permit system, they know what they should be uh, applying for at that point. Uh, and then as we get to, you know, things that will be required, again, it's just informational. We're talking about, hey, you're going to need plans. This is kind of the format. We need the plans to be in. They can download them. Uh, you know, plan requirements for an accessory dwelling unit specific for them, uh, aesthetic requirements in this example, even structural engineering requirements with uh, hyperlinks uh, for more information. Um, we're also sharing the fees and how it breaks down. You know, here we have $1,000 for a residential accessory structure, you know, 1020 for a construction permit fee and not applicable here for pay planning. But uh, but again, they're not paying, they wouldn't be paying for it here, but at least they're not going to be shocked uh, in the process when, you know, when and if they do apply. Um, at the end of the guide, um, the guide can also include, uh, I see a lot of large cities and counties have uh, training on their permit system, whether it's uh, videos, you know, documentation, and we can include that training. Hey, when you're ready, here's training on our permit system and some videos. And then finally, a link right back to your, uh, your permit application so that they can apply for a permit, right? Tying it all together. Now, usually it won't be happening the same day they're gathering information. It might be at, you know, a day, a week, a month later, but uh, uh, but they have that link and they have this guide to fall back to. Um, we can even look up here to my dashboard. Um, coming in, I have all the guides that I've I've generated, right? And I can come back and refer to them. So I generate it today. Tomorrow I come back to it, open up, and there's that same guide we've been looking at. Now, the powerful piece for cities and counties is you guys invariably have, whether it's 311 or you know, a, a group that is taking all these calls, and 311 groups usually aren't they're, they're not super educated in this process. They're just more following, you know, a situation. But, but also, the permit department has those people that just either calls in or comes in and says, can you just help me? I, I don't like computers. I don't have a computer or whatever the issue is. And it might be that person that you're sitting down with, right? Well, now, your permit department can simply open up Camino ask them for their address, what type of permit they're looking to, you know, what they're looking to uh, potentially build and ask them those, those simple questions and have them answer it. And when they generate a guide, you know, and this could be the 311 team, when they generate that guide in, you know, 90 seconds, they can come up here and download this entire guide into a 
a PDF format. So now, as you guys can see, the same information, setback information here, information on the zoning, everything is here in an organized fashion for them uh, so they can have access. You, your 311 team can you know, email it to them, you know, as a PDF document very quickly. And, uh, or if they're in your department, you can uh, have them print it off. So pretty simple, pretty simple stuff, but powerful stuff. And the comfort level for you is the 311 team isn't leaving anything out, right? Uh, your permit department in, in Santa Clarita when a permit, when an individual came in to gather data on a project, it took them about a half an hour to, you know, do the research on the project, you know, and understand the project and pull the various PDF files and add a couple, you know, scribbled extra steps on the side or cross a few out that don't apply. It took them about a half an hour to do that. And with Camino, now it takes them 10 minutes to generate the guide, get them out the door after they're reviewing it with them. And the residents are happy. They got this nice organized guide that's pertinent just to them. And and, and you all are happy because you, you got that out quick um, on that way. Um, I wanted to also share with you the back end of the system. You know, so now with, with a guide only um, uh, system, it's not as you're not accessing it as much. Uh, you're just giving them this this uh, this tool that they can access and utilize. But it, from time to time, someone will call in. And so, as an example, let's say someone calls in. Uh, Bob Smith calls in and says, "You know, I just generated a guide. I, I have some questions. Can you can you walk through it with me?" Well, you can very easily search. For Bob by his name, by his address, by even the type of uh, permit, you know, or information he's looking for. Uh, in this example, I'm right here on top. So I can click in and you have all the same information that was shared with Bob as, as well as the information that he included. So when he's talking about setbacks, we can come in, click and see the same information that Bob is talking about. You can even see that question that we asked earlier about uh, about setbacks. Um, so in this example, I could even, you know, here, here is your answer, and I can and I can document it here and post it. And like we talked about before, this conversation is also uh, uh, is also saved there within the system. Um, so, uh, going back here now, close this out. So you have, you know, that ability to access all this information, but also we give you a, uh, an active, uh, map of the parcel and the GIS information that we pulled from your ESRI information that your permit text, this might help in answering a question about the property or, you know, a question that we have there. The other pertinent thing here is over on the left-hand side, we have the information of this applicant, you know, what they're applying for, their address, parcel number, uh, but also you can see other submissions, you know, other guides that were generated from this address. So, uh, you know, great example is, uh, uh, this in the sense that I use this as a demo site. You so you can see I've generated a bunch of guides here, and and this might show that hey the person generated eight different guides for the same project, right? They were trying to game the system and trying to play it back and forth, but for you that's okay, right? It didn't take your time, and, and the system is going to give them the accurate answers based on the information that he. Uh, shares with it, right? Uh, in that way, but also within within here, you have the activity on this uh, 
on this property in this example when this individual generated this guide but also the questions that were asked and the answers that were provided to to this guide again sharing that uh, information there uh, within our system we also give you a active map of uh you know all the guides that have been generated and give you a an active map of uh, or a way of filtering this information to just what you want to see, right? So we could filter it down just over the last uh, month, and or we could even filter it down to just uh, residential projects, or even going as far as just wanting to see where all people are considering putting in a new custom home. Maybe that's valuable information uh, for you to be able to see. And from that, you could come in, select a certain location. Camino can give you some basic information on the guide there. And if you wanted to, even be able to click in and see that guide ad, as it was generated there. Um, Another piece, another powerful piece that we give you is uh, a, what we call our reporting tool. Now, this is uh, the city of Syracuse, New York, and this is their report. And I, let's just filter down on activity on their system over the last month. So you can see in Syracuse, they had 1,300 total visits to the site. 622 people started a guide from that. Uh, 139 had guides presented to them and 318 actually submitted applications. So in this example, Syracuse isn't just a guide only solution. If it was a guide only solution, the application would be zero. You wouldn't ever have an application. Um, but our goal with our report is our, our account managers are going to sit down with you and uh, and identify where people are getting stuck, right? Maybe maybe when they're selecting a submission type, they're getting stuck or they can't find the submission type. And the goal is to continually improve your guide so no one's getting stuck anywhere. You can also see at a glance when people are coming in to use your guide. In Syracuse, they're coming in at six o'clock in the morning and after six o'clock at night because it's simple to use, right? They don't need your help in generating uh, this. <clears throat> you can also see at a glance top submission types that people are looking for information on. In this example, it's uh, residential one and two family homes, uh, another active map, and even giving you an area where if someone's struggling to find a certain submission type, they can type in what they're struggling to find. And this might give you a lot of good information on ways, of, again, of improving. I see they're just, they're looking for it a certain way and we don't have it listed that way. And so it can help uh, help you uh, with that um, as well. Um, so with this, just know that um, the other the other um, piece, and we, we're having some questions coming on on for uh, the Q and A, is people are asking about price, and uh, price is based on it's pretty simple pricing. It's based on your uh, it's based on your population. You know, the idea being if you're fifty thousand people. Uh, it, you know, you don't have as much use of a guide as someone with 300,000 or 500,000 people that would be using it a lot. Um, so we price it accordingly. But um, for those of, you know, all of you have been involved with very in-depth uh, permit systems that have cost uh, millions, uh, if not certainly hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, with Camino and our guide. Uh, we are not talking that level of money. In fact, uh, um, to give you an example here, we have uh, 
for 100 to 250,000 population, the annual subscription would be $30,000 a year. So very affordable. That same annual subscription can be divided up between multiple departments, you know, planning and zoning, building, you know, business licensing, whatever. Um, and you share that system and that same subscription for that. That annual subscription also includes the implementation. Camino will build your guide for you and um, and train you on it. At the end, at the end of the uh, at the end of the implementation, we are going to train your team on uh, you know individuals, I should say, on, in your group that you want to have that backend access on the logic of Camino so they can very easily tweak the system uh, to keep it current, you know, uh, for you. Um, we're still there for support if you need us, but a lot of our customers are finding they can generate, uh, they can generate, uh, you know, those changes faster than even calling us. So, so why, uh, uh, why bother with that? Um, so a few other questions that are up here uh, also include, um, well, one just said, will Camino manage the implementation, which we just talked about. And, um, uh, and what on costs? Um, and one question came up saying, is Camino, Camino support located in the US? Yes, it is. And you would have um, your own individual um, account manager that would manage that for you. Uh, <clears throat> and, and another question here is, can Camino be purchased with cooperative IT contracts? And, and it can. We do have uh, the ability for uh, you to use some um, cooperative IT agreements, uh, which many of our customers are doing uh, today. So looking over the lot of duplicate questions here, but it looks as though we have uh, all our questions answered. Uh, but certainly, you know, for those of you that want some additional information, I have recorded this. So uh, I'll share that recording with you. But if there are additional questions um, or a need to maybe dive into the, the application in more depth and answer your questions, uh, please feel free to reach out um, and be happy to uh, talk with you further on it. But appreciate it today, guys. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, I'll make sure to get you this information right after the webinar.